Forget the shingling done. Thank God, finally. Using my dump trailer to put the old shingles in. That's cool. There you go, guys. Another view of it. Be cool. Well, being Saturday morning, we're not usually open, so what I'm doing today is the uh, roofers, as you just saw, are in doing gasoline alley, so while they're doing that, I decided I'm going to clean up a little bit, so I'm a workbench pretty good so far. Yet, uh, at least now you can see it. You know, you got to have a certain amount of stuff on it. What can you do? And we had a delivery this morning, and we have some weather stripping for the shed that we had the BX in. And this is uh, that what I call the horse hair weather stripping. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be welcomed out there. I got to put that on the shed later on. There's three strips strips of that. I think. That's close to two hundred dollars for three strips of that. So, hell, nothing is cheap anymore, is it? So what I'm going to do there now is I'm going to uh, get the the big pressure washer out, and I'm going to pressure wash the floor. Uh, as you know, this week we were doing a few tractor stuff, so my floor is just a little little tiny bit spotty. So I, I really. I'm anal about having the floor clean, so I'm going to do the floor there next. And then I always pressure wash out around the, the driveway, you know, especially right in front of the garage. Using the plasma cutter, it starts to look a bit grayish. So once I'm finished with the uh, pressure washer, it'll look uh, really clean again. It's, uh, it's important for us to keep it uh, as clean as we can in our surroundings because we live right by our business, and plus the fact, you know, we have people come here and you know you, you just don't want them to make you think you don't want them to make them think you're a pig and you don't clean up your shop so I like to keep our shop and our tools as clean as possible so that's my goal right now for today okay slight change of plans Canadian Tire has got battery tenders on special it's a battery tender plus so I'm gonna head down to our local Canadian Tire store which is about 20 minutes away, and we're going to pick up a couple. So, so we're going to Canadian Tire. Sure. Okay, cool. Let's make it happen. Ooh, big trailer. We're trying to get around here. Oh boy. We've got a van over here somewhere. We can find it. Huh? Over there. Pardon me? Oh yeah. Put in. Yep, cool. So we're heading to a place called Carboneer. Yeah. Is that 20 minutes away, eh? Say 20 minutes. Yeah. Driving sensibly. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Okay. I'm not going to let you hold the camera. No, don't do that. No, it's brutal. That, that's been tried before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in a Hummer it was different. Yeah. In a Hummer it was different, but anyway, we won't be showing too much of it. But we'll show them Canadian Tire when we get there. It's kind of hard to hold the camera steady. It is. You see that? Yeah. yeah floppy oh, definitely, nose. yeah. So anyway, yeah. we'll... Uh, We'll uh, show you a few things along the way, guys. There you go, that's Harbor Grace. We just got into the woodsy area. Yeah. But anyway, we're moving on down the highway. And we're about, uh, what, 10 minutes away from Carboneer? Yes. Cool. Okay. Alright, we're coming up to that lookout. You want to pull in there? Sure. We'll pull it in. We'll give the viewers a good look of uh, Harbor Grace. Cool. Okay. There you go, guys. Down there is Harbor Grace, Newfoundland, Canada. About 20 minutes away from our home in Bay Roberts. A little bit windy up here. Hope you don't get much wind noise, but I got the uh, the wind light on. And over there is the SS Kyle. K 
K-Y-L-E. So you might want to Google that. That's been there for about 100 years now. Well, no, it's not, it hasn't been there 100 years. It's been there from the 60s, but it's 100 years old. It was an old steamship. And then up here, it's a highway we just came down. Out up here too so what we'll do is we'll go out on the lookout first and then we'll come back and we'll go to Canadian Tire that way they can see what carbon here looks like. Yeah that's a good idea. Yep. I was going to zoom to the side but lots of times you lose your view and get in trees. Ah oh, so yes it's yeah. It's nice to clean you on so yeah. we'll just come back in a minute. Yeah there's Canadian, there's Canadian Tire to the left. That's where we'll end up going to get our battery tenders. Here's a bump. Oh, there sorry you go. guys. <laughs> so we'll uh, like I said, we'll go over to the lookout first, and then we'll uh, come back and go to Canadian Tire. Okay, guys, this is uh, Carbon Air. It's windy up here. Don't you get out, you'll blow over the bank. <laughs> Kathy, get out. <laughs> about the dirty windshield guys Kathy never got a chance to clean it oh yeah I never got a chance to clean it hey it's your van oh, I wish you could have done is clean it for me she's not gonna clean it for you if I start that then that's setting the standard then you're gonna want to clean all the time well, what's wrong with that I don't want to clean it all the time yeah I can see how that's a problem oh that's gonna be a big problem oh boy look at those storage containers oh they'd be nice wouldn't they oh you got that right oh, what a nice shed what they would make yeah Especially if you can pile them up and have two or three on the go to one time. Oh, yeah. You know? Have a little apartment up top for you and then put my junk down below. They are making them into apartments. Yeah, it's true, eh? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so here we are. We'll be right back. We have to go look for battery tenders. Cool. Did I get the right one? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's the plus one. They're the good ones. Guys, anybody got anything that got a battery and you're going to store it all winter? Get one of these, because I'm telling you, these things are about the best that you can get. Look at the warranty, 10 years. 10 year warranty, and we saved, what, $32 yeah. by buying the two of them today? Buying two today, yeah, regular so, 75 to 60 bucks. Yeah. yeah, perfect, eh? Yep. So, we'll head back home again now and see if the shinglers are uh, still at it. Perfect. Okay, back to cleaning the garage floor. Wanted to show you the uh, pressure washer that we're going to use today to clean the driveway. We have a smaller one there that we use to actually clean the cars and stuff. It's a Honda engine with a car shear uh, pump and that thing there is about 15 years old. Well, this thing here is from Prince's Auto and it's about maybe eight, seven, eight years old. It's a, it's a really good unit. It's got a 13 horsepower overhead valve engine. It's, it's a Honda clone engine and it works fabulous. It's unbelievable how, how reliable that engine is. And it's got uh, 3,000 pounds 
uh, pressure even at idle. So the gauge on it is good for 6,000. We put a zero tip on it and it actually uh, can cut a piece of 2 by 4 in two. So it's, it's got a lot of pressure. Now you'll see this hose here. And the reason why there's water coming out of it is because these pumps put out so much pressure that I had to put this valve on it here so that it wouldn't uh, water lock or water lock the pump. You, uh, if you didn't have this on, you basically wouldn't be able to pull the cord on the motor. You could eventually do it, but this here just allows you to start it easier, and it, it works quite well. Uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, everybody knows this, but before you start a pressure washer, you should uh, hook your hose up, and uh, before you start it, you should take your nozzle, and you should let the water go through the nozzle, and that way your pump don't starve for water, because the water in these pumps actually has a Hello. Hello. They actually act as a lubricant too and a cooler and a cooling method for the pump. So always uh, let your water come out through your nozzle before you actually start the uh, pump up. So now we'll go ahead and we'll start the pressure. So what I'm going to do now is I have the, the black tip on there and that's actually the soap tip. So I'm just going to soap it down and uh, then brush it in with a broom. And as you can see, our floor is not really dirty as it is, but I just like to keep it clean and fresh and smelling nice. That way when we start Monday morning, it's a fresh start. include something orange in this video because everybody says well how come you didn't have anything orange in it well okay there you go guys it's orange that'll clam them up for a while that's good thinking yeah so so what i usually do is usually scrub it down really good 
Then I'll change the uh, nozzle and I'll put a 30 degree nozzle on it. And then I uh, pressure wash it and then Kathy usually goes along after with the squeegee. Squeezes it down. While she's squeezing it down, I usually start to pressure wash the driveway. Now, what I mean by the driveway, I just mean just the front section there, probably 25 feet. And uh, it really, really makes a difference. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. That'll do, okay? That'll do it, yeah. So I'll, change the, I'll change this nozzle now. <laughs> yes, right. And then I'll come to pressure washer, and then you can squeegee. squeegee it. So we're going to put a 25 degree nozzle on it. Put the soap form back. And away we go. Kept on. You might explain why I got my broom upside down. Yeah, well, the squeegee is on that side. on that side. Yeah. Yeah, we get questions about that from customers. Yeah. Well, I guess they just figured we weren't smart enough to use a broom properly. Uh, yeah, they said, why, is your why are you using your broom upside down? Yeah, it's pretty neat, ain't it? It's pretty neat. It's a squeegee and, and broom. And you know what? It, don't it work better than an actual squeegee? Oh, it does. Yeah. Do you know what you have to pull it toward you? Like yes. No, the head, it, it yeah. jumps. It jumps. You hear it skipping? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. You. Unfortunately, you got to drag it into your feet. Yeah, you that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. You'll have an excuse now when I take you shopping tomorrow to buy a new set of sneakers. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah. It works for me. <laughs> Let's have a look at their woofers, guys.
shop floor so it's nice and clean now one of the questions that I have never really technically answered or I have answered it but I haven't answered it well I will admit is I've had folks ask me about our compressor they don't see a compressor in here well it's in here but it's up there that's where it's to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my toolbox. I'm going to get the ladder. I'm going to go up. I'm going to open the doors and I'm going to show everybody exactly what we're using for a compressor here, especially repairs. Well, there you have it, guys. You want to see it? Here it is. That's the compressor that we use at specialty repairs. That fella's been up there, well, I guess you can say going on close to 20 years. It's a 60 gallon, 5 horsepower, single phase, 220 volt, commercial grade compressor. The compressor head is a full oil sump type compressor. It's got oil in the base pan. Uh, you can see it's, it's heavy duty. The orange tag that you see on the side of it, that represents the uh, air filter number. And the air filter and oil is changed every two months. Regardless, it's changed every two months religiously. And as you can see behind it, there's uh, two vents. Sorry about all the smacking guys, that's the roofers. Uh, as you can see, there's two vents behind it, and that's outside air. So it circulates outside air. It, uh, it's been in that uh, built, I built that cage for it probably about six years ago. It was always up in that area, but it was just on that bottom part. But it was very, very noisy. I mean, it, it's unbelievable when that thing cuts in, how loud it is. So I, uh, I won Christmas, I came out during Christmas holidays, got bored in the house while we're off, and I decided to uh, build that uh, box around it. And, uh, Oh, it, it cut the noise down well, at least half or better. So uh, I insulate it. There's insulation on the bottom. It's uh, of course the uh, ceiling is insulated as well. So, but it really did the part, and uh, it's probably the the single most unsung hero of, uh, hero of specialty repairs. It's uh, it does its job. It does it loyally it's never given me any trouble other than I had to replace that cutout switch a few years back so that's really really great you know I mean, this thing here it's it's unbelievable it was bought at a company called commercial equipment back 20 years ago they they're no longer in business I don't even know if if that particular brand is made anymore you might have to Google it, but Tech Quick is the name of it. It's uh, T E C H Q U I P, and uh, I'll tell you, it's just a fabulous machine. So, so for the guys that want to see it, that's exactly what you see. That's what we're using, and that runs the whole shop. Well, that's pretty cool. We got it all the uh, all the shingles done today. So it's been a productive day. Contractor started, I think, seven o'clock this morning, and uh, finished uh, three o'clock. So 
they work pretty hard, four of them. Two ladies doing the gumming, putting the glue on the, the shingles, and two guys on the roof, so they did a good job. They did the main garage about a month and a half ago, so it was pretty cool. So glad to have that done. Now we're all set. Hi guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed our little video. Uh, it was kind of a surprise to have for the weekend, but we had to be around to watch the roofers. Uh, they were doing some work here today. So we thought while we were here, we might as well do some like, shooting, some video, uh, and on a project. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it and have a good weekend and thanks for checking us out.